Hello and welcome back to my little wibbly wobbly world. Well, what have I been up to? A uh, little bit, not really achieved that much, but a little introduction to my rather bloated lithium iron phosphate cells from Lito Color. What I have been doing for the last little while, excuse the mess, health and safety is like an Amazon delivery driver, can't find the place. For the last month or so, I've been playing with some lead acid van batteries and my off grid inverter, which is a Sunmart Mark S2 five kilowatt now that one it can take uh, it can take 48 volt batteries it can take four kilowatts of solar and it can also run off of the grid as well which is that little makeshift connection what I've been doing for the last little while is whilst we have a little bit of power coming in is I've just been charging those batteries via a plug socket so it's a pretend grid goes into that blue six mil arctic cable that goes off to the house into an off-grid consumer unit with the breakers um, for the last couple of months i've been running the fridge and freezer off of that uh, just to try and try and play with this see what happens see what you know see if i can actually do things without blowing myself up and also it's uh, where I was doing a lot of energy auditing and meter reading and blah 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 over about a day you're probably using a kilowatt or so in energy so when we've got the solar coming in it goes in off of the three pin plug socket in the wall and when there's only a little bit of solar trickling in I've just been using the power supply going into the batteries and wired up in series scabby old jump cables that have been recycled and reused jump cables <laughs> so yeah health and safety bloody nightmare but never mind nothing's gone up in smoke just yet so all looking good the next plan is is to try and get some solar into that and also do something with these lithium iron phosphate cells now I've had these for about a year now and because they're so badly bloated uh, I really have been quite nervous about using them quite intimidated by a sort of the reputation that lithium's got but lithium iron phosphate is the safer of the chemistry but even so these are bloated they are touching You know, they're, 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 they're really quite puddingy and they're really quite squishy so one thing that I've been arming and arming and arming and arming and arming and arming is do I compress them well there's a lot of debate in the in the off-grid world as to compress to compress these things or not to compress these things uh, I still don't know what to do I'm still nervous I'm still apprehensive that's one of the better ones There we go, kaboom. Jesus Christ, Gary. Fucking piff paff puff. Oh, I can't really get on it one ended. One ended health and safety nightmare. Just to kind of end my days in one big flash. One of the. <laughs> because these things are able to kick out all of their amps like that um, I have had these all connected up in parallel and done the balancing and I had them on a battery tester if these were brand new grade A they should have been 105 they should have been 105 ampere hour which would have given me 5.3 kilowatt hour nominal 
um, but on my battery tester that I've got I only got 4.4 kilowatt hour um, individually one of these tested at 84 amp hours so yeah buyer beware when you're dealing with Aliexpress it's bloody wild west show out there my next lot of batteries I'm gonna actually buy them via an affiliate link out of someone reputable like the off-grid garage Australia um, when I first bought these year or so ago you know wet behind the ears and green didn't know any better but as soon as I took the delivery I ordered them from Lito Carla and they came with Collier stickers so who have I bought them off of I do not know but my word of advice avoid Lito Carla um, they've got a really really bad reputation and proof is in the pudding these are absolute shit um, but we've got this in <laughs> good old UK you know not only is the cost of energy going up and up and up and up and up um, we're now facing rolling blackouts because of the deepening energy crisis for one cause or another so it's got to the point where it's like squeaky bum time uh, just gonna just gonna suck it up and use them and see what pops uh, um, do I do I compress them I don't know I really don't know that as I said they're they're really quite squishy to the hand but when you line them when you line them all up the amount that they would have to squash is something it's something really quite scary um, so I might just give them a little bit of a little bit of a just a little bit of a squeeze um, just so that they don't get any worse that's the plan maybe I mean if they compress okay and easily and nothing goes pop then I'll, I'll compress them and get them nice and square and uniform and lovely jubbly but what I have done so far is I had, uh, found a tabletop from somewhere so I've made an insulated plinth with a bit of plasterboard on top all glued together with spray glue that was all the packing that came out of the box so that if it goes down onto a concrete floor uh, the batteries are insulated off of the cold concrete floor if the battery works and everything's tickety boo then I shall probably do a, a plasterboard clad insulated box so that there's a little bit of fire resistance we'll see how it goes but so I've got got some threaded rod some sleeves to go over the threaded rod so that there's no chafage and no no way that I can short it out and a load of clamping blocks and some end plates to give them a little bit of a squeeze so that is my next that is my next adventure really hopefully everything goes tickety boo and I don't burn this place down or electrocute myself um, so yeah I'll get this assembled and squeezed together and fixed and then I've got to try and wire up the Dali BMS which is uh, which is going to be fun right that's it for now I hope you're all looking after yourselves and fighting whatever way you can because uh, it's just uh, living in the UK is embarrassing yeah absolutely embarrassment the way things are going politically and the energy crisis it's just every man for himself or on her own so yeah little Carla Lito, Lito, Lito Kala, whatever, AliExpress, avoid them like the plague, really. Really, but, you know, this was all I could afford at the time, so I went for the cheapest I could afford, and, you know, so I made that mistake by going for the cheapest, but I also made the mistake as in the 105 ampere hours, uh, you know, we're never going to be big enough you multiply that out by 16 it gives you the 5.3 kilowatts nominal that won't last all night you know between the now we're in october and the boilers running that gobbles up quite a lot of electricity you know the house has got a heat recovery system it's a bit snake oil a bit of a waste of money i don't like the thing but that's it 
that, that uses a good old chunk you know and you've got your fridges or your freezers and cooking and things like that. you end up with a rolling blackouts five kilowatts is gone you know uh, just but as they say you got a wee with the willy you got so that's all we've got for now look after yourselves shine on bye bye for now hello it's me again i tell you i suck as a videographer youtube person I, there's a couple of things that i completely forgot to say about um i was giving these a dust off and i came across a couple that i tested and it was 3.655 volts charged to and then in discharge i discharged them to 2.8 um, and it gave us 83.92 ampere hours and this one gave us 83.85 ampere hours so many sparks are missing out of these things you can tell that they're second hand and used because I'll try and get the light onto it several of these out of the 16 have got that indentation there in exactly the same position so and then you've got ones there they haven't got any indentations at all there's nothing there nice and smooth and clean so these are second hand they're used they've come out of something like a power wall or a, a 12 volt marine battery that's got a temperature sensor and that's where it's been squished in there to make contact as a temperature sensor so they're clearly used clearly second hand clearly down on power bloated to buggery um, one thing that I did forget to say which is really really useful is the LifePo 4s they've always got the QR code on the top now the off-grid garage Australia YouTube channel that is one of my favorites um, the guy Andy has put a link up on most of his videos there's a link to an app that is a QR code scanner for LifePo 4 battery cells and that should tell you all of the information that's sort of kept on that as like date of manufacture and what it was tested to blah 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 um, I tried the app out on the QR codes on these and it's just completely fake, you know, unrecognised, does not exist. So it's very, very advisable to download that app and use them. So, eh, dodgy, dodgy little buggers. That is all for now, hopefully. <laughs> we shall see. So there's the rest of them, all dusted off, ready to go. Ready to go, and let's see what blows. <laughs> right, bye-bye for now. Take care of yourselves.